Hi, this is Bill Lett here, and we're with the team Samatek, who is from Sabanchi University in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, one of our favorite places. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves. They're part of the uh, Global Founder Skills Accelerator, which is a three-month program here at the Martin Trust Center for MIT Entrepreneurship. And they are three technical people, and they're looking to implement their idea to how to create a new venture. So please introduce yourselves. Hello, uh, we are Somatic from Sabanji University in Istanbul, and we, we are here for three people. My friends, I'm Inanj, with Gizem and Direk, we uh, stand here. Actually, we are working on social media. We want to analyze opinions and sentiments of people on social media, what they are thinking about companies, their products, and specific features of their products. And in brief, this is our project. So, of course, we have some problem. We have some questions for you. Yes. Uh, okay, let's start for the first, first one, for example. And okay, we uh, def we want to define our persona, and before we define our persona, we determine our end user as well. Yes. So, in some cases, it it would be hard to understand the difference the differences between each other. Can yes. you ex explain that a little bit? Yeah. The the difference between the persona and the end user. So first, we start with the persona, which is you know kind of a more general description. It's not any one specific person, it's the composite of what our target market looks like. And that helps us calculate our TAM. But once we, our total addressable market, but once we move down to the next step after calculating that, we want to get really specific and we want to get a real customer, one real customer. And we take that person, we put their picture up on the wall and we understand everything about them. Because any time you need to make a decision, you want to say, how do we break this tie? What's the right decision? Should we make feature A, feature B? What kind of, dis you know, should we sell direct? Should we sell through websites, whatever? You can go to that persona and say, that's the right person. Um, it helps you break the tie. The more specific you are, the better off you are. So the key thing is, is that it's easier to find an end user profile because it's a composite. When you get a persona, it has to be very representative of the entire target customer base. But it's much more powerful for people to have a real person to relate to than some side of composite because then people just debate whether this is, what would that person want? And you might say, well, they want this, and you say they want that, whereas if it's a real person, we just call up and say, hey, what do you think? So the more specific, the better. Um, as you define, uh, like, and you use a composite. Yes. Um, composite customer for us, like how can we choose a specific customer uh, as a person and what would be the good starting point for us? So you have to look at and find the one that's the most representative of that group. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to have access to them so you can really understand them. You might say this person's really good, but w that person doesn't like us or won't speak to us or whatever. You have to have access to them where you can really get to understand them. Because you have to understand them not just that, you know, this is what I want, but you have to understand them at, at, at that rational level. But you have to understand what motivates them, what scares them, you know, what do they fear more than anything else in the world. So you have to be able to observe them and spend time with them. So you have to understand them uh, rationally, emotionally, socially, and, and other ways that we might not even know. Completely. Completely. Yes, be able to, the line between you and your customer should be kind of unclear. Mm -hmm. You should understand them so well that after a certain point you're, you can finish their sentences. Um, I wonder that in our case, what is the advantage of for, uh, working toward the defining persona? Well, I think in your case, you, so for instance, you have an engine that's going to give you sentiment, you know, what's going on. So that could be relevant for lots of different people. But if you do that, you end up with something that's not very specific for any one person. So defining a persona will say, this is what we're committed to. We're solving this person's problem. And then your sentiment engine will solve their problem. And it will give you great focus as to what to do. Whereas if you um, say, well, we can do it for banks, and we can do it for you know, online social media, and we can do it for telephones, no one ever gets you know, excited because it's too general. I think um, there are different features should be prioritized in persona for different projects. So we are focusing on B2B, B2B yeah. projects. Yeah. So uh, what features should be prioritized in a persona for our case? So 
So first of all, you, 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 if you have different personas, then you have different markets. And you can't do that because you're too small. There's just three of you, and you're trying to become a big company. You have to get to a point where you're making a group of customers very, very happy. Not making this person over here kind of happy, and this person kind of happy, and that person happy. You'll never you'll experience kind of high growth, exponential growth. So what's important in, say, a B2B is, you know, what is their number one priority? What Gets them, what keeps them awake at night or what motivates them the most during the day. And in the case of a data center manager, for instance, you know, we have this one company was trying to sell them how to be green, you know, mm -hmm. be more green. That's not what they care about. The number one thing a data center manager cared about was how to keep the system up, not no downtime. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. Reliability is the number one. And then number two was how do you grow it? So when you know a per, when you figure out a persona, you have to figure out what is their top priority and what's their second priority. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the most important things. So those kind of come through. What do they fear most, and what motivates them the most? Yeah. Okay. And one question maybe in this point is: Okay, we are supposed to define our persona, and we need to implement the uh, later following steps based on this persona. Yeah. And what if, if our persona change in the following steps, in the later steps? How does yeah. it affect uh, the progress of the company? So the persona can change, especially as you start to go through the process, and then you go to your next 10 customers, and you find out that actually that the next 10 customers don't look like that. And you might pick your new persona from that. What you do is you figure out what are the top priorities, and then you're going to go back and just go through the process. But going through the pro again, you will go through the process the second time, but it's going to be much easier the second time through than the first time. For first of all, you'll understand it, and second of all, you'll kind of have thought about 50% of this problem or 75% of it. It's just making a change here or a change there. It's all about the experience. Yeah, it's about it's it's about experience, and that's the whole that's the whole point of, you know. Your, your idea will change, but understanding the process is what will make you very successful. And faster as well. Faster as well. <laughs> and also, I want to learn that. Could you please explain the result of having a multiple persona for a startup company? Yeah, so, so you don't have multiple markets. So you don't have a persona for this market, persona for that market, so persona for that market. What, what you want to have is one market, but within that market, you might have the end user persona and then the economic buyer persona. So that's when pers multiple personas would be good. But it's still one market. And we're going to focus on one market. And you might have personas, multiple personas that say, here's a persona for this market, but that's a persona of someone you're not going to serve. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we know some of our students use personas to, to show, here's a persona of a customer we do not want. But what multiple personas would be acceptable would be one market, a multi-sided market, you know, an, econo an end user and an economic buyer and maybe a champion within that market. Thank you. Well, that's, that's from our friends in Istanbul who are starting to go through the 24-step process now and they are making great progress and will help make revive, or I should say, re uh, make the Turkish economy even more vibrant. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Take care.